Welcome back everyone to the Port Vale career mode here on FC25. Again, big thank you for all the support on episode 1 and 2. It's amazing to see that so many people are still watching my content and are still happy to watch a, a more long form series of career mode content. The last episode was a mixed bag in terms of, well, one, how the team did on the pitch and two, everything going wrong. But I just want to say thank you guys for just watching that video and I tried to make the best out of it as I could and I think in the end it turned out pretty well. This time the video files for the previous month's games do exist so let me take you through those right now. We started off November with a 1-0 win away at Harrogate Town with Connor Hall scoring a header against his former club before going on to lose 3-1 away at Notts County in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy. We then played our big rivals crew Alexandra at home and we took the lead with a brilliant goal from Lauren Talai and a string of fine saves from Connor Ripley including this one kept the score at 1-0 and we ended up getting all three points. We then went on to play Swindon away from home and they took the lead in the first half through Shimanga but that was pretty much as good as it got for them as Jake Kane went on to get two yellow cards in the space of one minute for two identical tackles on George Byers to get himself sent off. And after that, they crumbled as Laurent Talai went on to score two goals for the Veil vale, and Antoine Hackford adding a third to complete the comeback win and take home all three points. We also progressed to the third round of the FA Cup with a 2-1 win over League One side Leighton Orient. And since the last episode, we have made a few changes. For starters, the formation. I have gone permanently to a 3-4-1-2 formation. We have so much firepower up front and playing with a 4-4-1-1, we were not able to really utilize it that much. So using this formation, allows us to basically and another thing i've gone and done is introduce some sliders as well i am currently using cutsy slider setup that he released a video recently with his own slider setup on it and i have to say it has worked really well i will go down them here just briefly but if you guys want to see what these sliders actually are i will put a link to cutsy's video in the description below the actual sliders are similar to the simulation sliders with a few tweaks here and there and the ai behavior ones have been beefed up to the max basically because the AI doesn't cross so we put the crossing frequency all the way up and it just makes the AI feel a little bit more well human I guess unfortunately we didn't find anyone new for the youth academy at this stage so we still only have these four people in the youth academy but I will probably be calling them up before January and loaning them out in January I'm really liking the look of Harrison Nichols and Jude Robinson especially and we currently sit in second with 32 points Walsall have cleared off so I don't think we're going to catch them anytime soon but we have definitely improved on ourselves and we now sit in second again just remember we do have one of the better squads in the league so whilst it might seem like I'm doing quite well for the first season I'm expected to do well I mean I didn't go through the board's objectives because well we're not going to get sacked so it doesn't really matter but our objective for domestic success is to win the league title so we are expected to do well as I say so here we go then we're about to enter well not what is technically not the first game of the episode but the first one of this portion of the episode Grimsby Town at home they play a kick and rush style and they play a 4-1-4-1 so not five at the back I'm also now reliably informed that his name is Laurent Talai and not Talaj the man himself said it in a press conference why is all of our defense tight but that is the squad we're going into this game with a little bit of a patched up defense with Jones and Smith in there although I wouldn't really call Nathan Smith a patch up job he's he's pretty good Port Vale against Grimsby cheers lists great ball over the top Shorrock on the left hand side the first touch control error really showing there because it's on 77. Hackford, Chiz, on the edge of the area, forces Eastwood into the save. Chiz look, looking for the space out on the right-hand side. Curtis runs into it. He's what on earth was that? Oh, this isn't good. This really isn't good. It's Callum Ainley. Oh, Ripley, good save. He's had nothing to do all game, so he's kept on his toes. Oh no, this really isn't good. Okay, great save in the end from Connor Ripley. Here goes Antoine Hackford. Needs to shoot, does. Eastwood saves. Rico Richards just come onto the pitch, taking the corner. Nathan Smith. Oh no, this really isn't good. Raquel Pike's through. It's Pike. Oh, Ripley, you didn't really need to save that. Oh, he's going to grab it. Yeah. Ah, it's going to be nil-nil. It's going to be another nil-nil. It's another nil-nil draw. I seem to be having a 
few of these recently. We do have a lot of games in the month of December, so there probably is going to be quite a few simulated ones, so apologies for that, but it is what it is. The first one of those is going to be Bradford City away from home. We're going to auto-replace the unavailable player, which is Rory Payton, and we get a 1-0 win with a George Byers goal in the 83rd minute. And again, we're going to simulate this game at home to AFC Wimbledon. Squad is pretty much fully fit apart from Jack Shorrock, but again, it's another 1-0 victory. Rory Payton returning from injury to get the only goal of the game. But we get one striker back and the other one is now out for six weeks. Laurent Talai, he's been our best striker for, through this um, save so far. And now we're without him for six weeks. And I'm actually going to use this opportunity to call up Jude Robinson from the Youth Academy and give him a couple of games just to see what he feels like. I've just seen this pop up on my screen and I feel like we might have a bit of an issue with contracts expiring. Oh my god, how many of that? Oh my days. Right then. I'm going to have to be sort of careful here with who I renew, con whose contract I, oh my god, I can't speak. I am going to accept this offer for Tom Sang from Brescia and see if he actually moves there, just so we actually get money for him now. I did not realise his contract was expiring at the end of this season, and I don't want to lose him for free. So I've narrowed it down to the players that I don't want to give new contracts to, and I'm going to put all these guys on the transfer list. Apart from Aaron Davis, he didn't accept my contract offer. I start, basically what I've done with all contract officers, I've started it at the wage that they're currently on. So in Aaron Davis's case, 1,300. And then I've told them to not go over, I think in this case it was 3,000. And he just straight up rejected it. I'm going to try and renegotiate with him if I can. If I can't, then, well, he's going to be leaving at the end of the season. Jason Lowe, I've not used once. And he's also going down in overall. So he's going to get sold. Dan Jones is going to get sold. Tom Sang is already, well, he already wants to leave. So I can't renegotiate with him anyway. The rest I have managed to renegotiate with. We're going to have a similar problem next year with all of these lot. But um, if you just look down the list here, Clark, Mitch Clark was one of them. He signed a two-year deal. Ethan Chislett signed a two-year deal. Deborah signed a two-year deal. Edwards and Benicio both three-year deals, along with Kyle John and Andrew Boer, four-year deal. And what I'm actually going to do, in fact, I'm not going to put Davies on the loan list, but I'm, I am going to put some people on the loan list. I've just realised that Benicio's lost overall as well through being injured. Is he still injured? He is, he is back from injury now, apparently, so... But he's now lost overall. He was 57, he's now 56, and he's actually been overtaken in overall by Jack Shorrock. In fact, I might actually loan out Jack Shorrock. And yeah, I'm going to loan out Jack Shorrock probably and play Benicio and have Conor Grant as the backup, at least for the second half of this season. And then next season, I'll probably loan out Benicio. However, Benicio is back from injury, and I'm now going to play him in this game just to get him, I guess, match fit again. We're actually playing Barrow away from home. Of course, Barrow is the last team that I used in a career mode series on this channel. Of course, the team I was using when I stopped doing YouTube for a while. So it'll be nice to go back there. Barrow against Port Vale. George Byers, you know what, have a hit from there. Why not farm him with the save? Here's looks to get it in the middle. Connor Hall's back on the pitch, so he's there to win the headers. Peyton gets it. George Byers again. It's dropped for Connor Hall. Oof. Okay, Deborah has actually got a long throw in this game. That's good. I like that. What I don't like is the fact that there's a massive hole in our defence and Dom Telford's run right into it. Deborah's hacked him down there. Oh my god, he's got a red card. Oh, that's not good. I mean, yeah, he was last man, wasn't he? And Deborah's just gone and just kicked him over. <laughs> Be saved as a custom preset. I'm going to have to save it as a custom preset. But it's now, it's still at 4 3 1 2, so I don't understand. You're telling me that I can't change my formation? That's so stupid. Because I'm now I'm now playing three at the a three at the back formation with two at the back. I can't change it. It says it saves as a custom preset, and there's no, there's no custom preset there. We're just gonna have to deal with playing two at the back for the rest of the game. That's just not that's just not sustainable. Yeah, look, there's a massive hole because Deborah was our central centre back as well. Oh my god, this what on earth? No suggestions available for tactics either. So I can't I literally cannot change the formation. And I can only import tactics using a code. Me change the formation. Yes. No, it's still not changed it. Well I guess for now I'm just gonna have to put someone else at the back. I'm gonna have to put Garrity at centre back or something. Well there's an exposed floor of this game. Literally cannot change formation or tactic during a game unless it comes up in the bottom left, uh, in the bottom left or right. It's like we have all this tactical freedom outside of a match, but once you're in a match, you're locked in unless they give you alternatives themselves. It's a massive hole in the defence again. Ripley saves. Garrity, you need to get there. 
He hasn't got there. He has got there. Well done. I can't believe you're locked into a tactic unless they suggest you alternatives. That's so dumb. Oh, it's crossed in. Oh, Garrity. Well done, mate. Every time Barrow come forward now, we're on the back foot because we really now do have a patched up defence. They're in again. It's headed wide by Kuyate. We've got a centre back, a right back and a centre mid as our defensive three. We can't change it from a defensive three. Okay, now it's letting me change the formation. So you can't do it during the match, but you can do it at half time. That's so dumb. So what I've done is I've gone for a 4-1-3-2. I've got Bayer set to a centre half so that when we lose the ball, he will drop into centre half and also on the ball um, Kyle John I've got as a false back but he will stay in the defensive midfield area um, as opposed to you know getting up the pitch or, or being in central midfield I know it will leave us a bit more vulnerable on the left hand side but that's better than being vulnerable in the centre oh yeah and also I've brought on James Plant for Ethan Chislett just so that I've actually got a right back on the pitch because I'm not playing Ethan Chislett at right back Ben Garrity with the efforts on target, but saved. I've brought on a little bit more attacking flair. Rico Richards has come on for Ben Garrity, even though it's at centre mid. He's not very good at centre mid. And Conor Mahoney is very good at free kicks, and that's a second for Barrow. Like, it was just for a handball as well that wasn't even meant to happen, and we've been punished like that. I mean, Jesus. I think it, we're just having one of those sessions where the game just does not want to do what you want it to do. Rico Richards unleashed a long shot. It's it's terrible. It's our what? Nessio, use the pace. Plate forward. Hackford's got pace as well. Jude Robinson, have a hit, saved again by Farman, he's saving everything that's coming at him. Oh, come on, that's stupid. Oh, my days, it's going to be another, isn't it? Yeah, it is. How can one pass just take out my entire flipping defence, man? Oh, this game, man, this game has actually just, this game has actually just been torture. I mean, obviously, moral of the story, don't get one of your centre-back sent off after 10 minutes, but it, it just felt... He was last man, yes, but there were other defenders there still, and it was only the 10th minute. Anyway, done with that one. Move on. Next game, Salford at home. We're simulating it. We've won all of the other simulated games so far. We're going to win this one, are we? We are. 3-2. What a game that is, then. Diamond Edwards, George Byers, and Ethan Chislett. What a way to bounce back, eh? An actual tweet by Connor Ripley, or a social media post or whatever. To be fair, 10 clean sheets is really good going. People will be talking about this for years. I highly doubt that, Dimas. We've had all these offers coming for these players as well, and guess what? Not a single email. Jack Shorrocks had two loan offers, which we're negotiating to just be loans because they were loan to buys. Connor Grant will accept that 450000 and Jason Lowe, yeah, 90,000 will accept that as well. Tom Sang's move did to Brescia did break down, so I'm not holding out much hope for that Connor Grant move to Cicena. Now Kyle John wants to leave because he didn't start in one singular game. This game's so broke. Well, it's not the game, it's just career mode in general. They still haven't fixed the issue where if, what, where if a player gets left out for just one singular game, they, they come to you saying, yeah, I'm not getting any games and I want to leave. No, Kyle John, you've played almost every single game so far this season. You can't come to me saying that I'm damaging your career by not playing you. For the rest of this save, however long this save goes on, for how long he is at this club, he is going to want to leave every single time. Which means that when his contract's up, I can't renew it because he wants to leave. This really is just one of those episodes. Any anyway, Morecambe away is the final game of this episode. They play kick and rush. They play 4-4-1-1. Four, four, one, one. So, at least again, it's a different formation. And for some reason, every time I go into the squad, it's now defaulting to Laurent Talai, who's now lost overall himself because he's been injured. Anyway, Conor Grant on the left-hand side. Other than that, the starting 11 is how you would expect it to be. Morecambe against Port Vale. This game simply has to go well. It has to go well. I've not scored in this session today. I don't want to go through this entire session without scoring. Obviously, we scored earlier in the episode with the with the games played before, but I played those a few days ago. Already Morecambe are through with Hallam Hope. He's, oh, he's absolutely done, Jesse Deborah. That's a great save, Connor Ripley. Into Byers. Uh, just being mugged. He's still got it somehow. George Byers, have a hit. Oh, <laughs> there we go. That is what we needed. Oh, wow. Long shot central. This time it is George Byers. What a hit. 
We get the POV camera and everything. Oh, look at that. Stop that one. Nice. We're playing better stuff. We're playing better stuff in this game for sure. Rory Payton hasn't really done a lot in these last few games. Has not impressed me at all. Curtis with the cross. We haven't got anyone torn the box. Connor Grant picks it up and has a shot. We are getting more chances in this game. We've probably had more chances, like general chances, um, in this game than we've had in the last two combined. Just can't get the ball to our strikers at all. And then once we do, they just get they, they get like two or three players around them straight away. Oh, Chislett wins it. Good job. He's running. Hackford's going. Oh, it's played to his feet and not in front of him. Finds the ball out to Jack Shorrock. Chislett. Garrity. We're literally just... We can't get through. Look at all of these Morecambe players. Look at all of those red shirts. Shorrock. Cross in. It's terrible. What a surprise. Playing some good stuff here. Garrity. Oh, he nearly lost it there. Ethan Chislett. He's running to that space. Go on. Ethan Chislett. Play it across. Oh, Hackford was there. The pass was awful again. And he's going to have it played or, or not. Okay, he's just not going to have it played to him. He's just going to go through him. Robinson wins it though. Jude Robinson! <sighs> I'll tell you what, if he scores in this game, that would be unbelievable. Get in! Get in! It's only 1-0, which means that pretty much every game in this episode has had one goal in it, other than that Barrow debacle. But <sighs> it's three more points, which is what we needed. I know it might not be very entertaining to just watch a constant stream of 1-0s, but if we're getting the three points, we're getting the three points. So Jason Lowe has completed the move to Morecambe, who we've just played then, so he'll be leaving in a couple of days, and we've got an A rating for that as well, for 90,000. Best possible deal was 90,000. And now, ah, uh, Antoine Hackford's been recalled by Sheffield United. So I think Jude Robinson is going to have to hang around and not go out on loan this season. Okay, our situation with money isn't too bad, but... It's still probably not enough to sign a player without then having money issues for the rest of the season. We do, however, have brand new scout youth scout reports, and if we have any, well, you'll see them. Daniel Jacobs, hello, sir. Overall of 60 to 76 with a potential of 77 to 94. Get in. 17 years old with 1.6 million. Oh, he's that makes him probably the best player at the club. We've got another one as well. Caleb Butler, a centre mid, 53 to 71 overall, 65 to 89 potential. <laughs> I'll tell you what as well, Michael Miller looks decent. 83 to 94 potential, we're going to sign him up and we probably just... Yeah, we, we now no longer have money. We're going to go back to Vietnam because it didn't give us anything. And then Jakobsen we're going to send back out again. We'll, we'll send him to another African country in search for goalkeepers. Let's go Eastern Africa and send him to... Oh, uh, Malawi. Why not? I'm going to hand it over to you guys now as well. What countries do you want me to scout? I have kept forgetting to ask this, which I'm so sorry for, but I have kept forgetting to ask. What countries do you want me to scout? Let me know in the comments below and I'll get a list together and scout those countries. Also, a good time to check out the new recruits. Michael Miller, a centre-back. How tall is he? Six foot two, so he is an actual centre-back then. This guy is straight up. Rico Richards replacement for next season and probably Ethan Chislett replacement and then finally we've got Caleb Butler who's 62 rated as well we're getting some centre mids together aren't we this is the George Byers replacement right here for the this is the future George Byers we've got the future Ethan Chislett and the future George Byers right here but it has put a massive dent in our budget and we now can't afford to sign anyone so we really really need to sell people now we are getting offers in by the looks of it Tom Sang 440,000 Reggiano. He didn't go to Italy last time. I doubt he's going to this time. Still annoying how you don't get emails for those because how am I supposed to know? Anyways, that's going to end off this episode of the Port Vale Career Mode on FC25. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button down below. Subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more. And if you don't want to miss a video, hit that little bell next to subscribe button and enable all notifications and you will get a, vi you'll get a notification every single time that I upload a video. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching, and peace.